frequency of free longitudinal vibration so we are going to consider a sp spring mass system okay so initially we consider the spring alone okay a spring is there it has a stiffness of k and it is the case one and the case two we included a mass okay so which is attached to the spring which is having a stiffness of k okay so once the mass is attached to the spring so what has happened here is it has been displaced to some distance okay so that uh, that distance is delta okay it is delta that's okay so so after adding the mass here mass is m so the spring has been displaced to a certain distance that we have considered that as a del okay and in the case three so what has happened here is here I'm going to induce vibration on that okay so that is longitudinal vibration so I'm just going to move the mass in the downwards direction to induce the vibration on the system okay so what has happened is this spring has even displaced further from this position okay so here we can take this position as equilibrium position okay this position and here again it has moved to another distance that is here the distance the spring has moved is x so that means i have moved it moved the entire system in the downwards direction the mass to induce the vibration okay then i am going to allow it to vibrate on its own so that is what why we call that as free longitudinal vibration okay so once i release uh, the system it is going to be here and then it is going to move in the upward direction okay then again it's going to move downwards direction like that the motion is happening continuously okay as long as uh, all the energy uh, are lost so once all, all the energy is lost then it will come back to equilibrium position okay so by using these three uh, conditions we are going to uh, find the frequency of the free longitudinal vibration okay so for this, for the case two so now i'm going to construct the free body diagram for the case two okay so now uh, here uh, we know that it has got a mass okay so we're going to consider the free body diagram for the mass so it has a weight okay so we know that weight is equal to m into g okay and here is a force so this force is called spring force okay it is spring force okay because of the spring it just tend to pull the entire mass in the upward direction whereas this weight tend to pull the mass in the downwards direction due to gravity okay so this system it is a static system because it is in equilibrium condition okay so the uh, mass is acting in the downwards direction creates weight and the spring force is pulling the entire system in the upward direction okay so now i'm just going to explain you how to find out the spring force because so here we know that uh, the stiffness unit is newton per meter okay so otherwise we can say that uh, stiffness is okay so stiffness is force divided by deflection okay so now we need to find out this force okay this force is called spring force okay so if you want to know the spring force what do you have to do you need to multiply the stiffness with deflection with deflection okay so now to find out the spring force i have to multiply stiffness with the deflection okay so here uh, what is the stiffness that is k and what is the deflection it is del okay so now the free body diagram for this system is completed so according to equilibrium condition so what we can do is 
So here, what is that? Mg, Mg is equal to K del. So this is what the thing that what we have got from the case two, the free body diagram of the case two. So here it is in equilibrium condition. So that means the force which is acting in the downwards direction is equal to upward direction. So how to find out the spring force? We have to calculate it from the stiffness formula. Stiffness is force divided by deflection. So spring force is stiffness of the spring times the deflection that it has undergone because of the force which is applied. Okay. So now we have got uh, an equation that is or the condition mg is equal to k del. Okay. So now I'm just going to construct the free body diagram for the case uh, three. Okay. So here unlike the previous case it is in um, motion okay so because initially what I have done is I have uh, pulled the entire system in the downwards direction so the motion happens in the downwards direction so here we are going to apply the D Lambert's principle okay by using D Lambert's principle we can uh, consider this dynamic system as a static system so we all know that okay what is dl Lambert's principle so if you include inertia forces in the system then we can consider as a static system okay that is what the dl Lambert's principle is okay so while uh, constructing the free body diagram for the case 3 so i'm just going to consider the free body diagram for the mass okay so here is the mass so so it is obviously it is going to be downwards direction that is mass that we all know that okay and uh, we have to add the spring force but here it has uh, got an additional deflection okay so initially it has got deflection del and then once i pulled it in the downwards direction it has got an additional deflection of x so here how to write the spring force uh, magnitude so k times del plus x so deflection we have to put it here the deflection the entire deflection is the summation of del and the x so here it is k times del plus x okay so then it is in motion okay it is not a static condition so we according to de Lambert's principle we have to consider the energy of forces so what is energy of force according to Newton second law F is equal to ma and this is what the energy of force so energy of force is mass times acceleration okay and we must remember the thing that is the energy of force is exactly acting opposite to the direction of the motion so here motion is acting in the downwards direction so the energy of force is acting in the upward direction that is m into a okay m into a okay so m is the mass and a is the acceleration of the system okay in other words we can just write like this okay what is that m into d square x by dt square so instead of a i can put uh, d square x by dt square so now the dynamic system becomes a static system because we have applied the Lambert's principle here that means we have considered the inertia forces in the system so it becomes so uh, static so now we are going to apply the equilibrium condition for the uh, case 3 okay so we have mentioned all the forces which are acting in the system including inertia force so now we are going to apply the equilibrium condition so that means the net force which is acting along vertical direction is equal to zero since there is no horizontal forces uh, we have to take net forces which are acting in the vertical direction is equal to zero so okay so now we will write the equation okay so so for this condition uh, so what you have to do is so upward force that is uh, m d square x by dt square plus k del plus x so this term okay so i have included these two terms and this one is minus that is minus mg is equal to zero okay 
so this is a uh, uh, equation number two okay so in this equation initially what we are going to do is we are just going to replace this mg by k del because we know that what is mg is k del okay so i'm going to substitute mg value in equation number two so it becomes m d square x by dt square and i'm just going to expand this term also that is k del plus k x okay and here it is minus what is that mg is equal to k del okay is equal to zero so now these two things gets cancelled so the final equation becomes m d square x by dt square plus k x is equal to zero okay so now we have to write this equation and in my previous lecture we have seen how to derive the equation of motion and the equation of motion is what is that that is d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to zero so this is what the equation okay so now i'm just going to compare uh, this equation that is equation number three with the equation of motion so that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to divide this equation number three by a uh, m so what i'm going to do yeah so that i can relate these two equation okay so d square x by dt square because m is going to get cancelled plus k by m x is equal to zero okay so now i am going to cumber these two equations so equation number four and equation uh, of motion okay so from that so you can easily understand that um, here d square x by dt square and d, d square x by dt square are common and only the difference is here omega square is there here k by m is there okay so and from that by comparing equation four and equation of motion so what we can do is we can write omega square is equal to k by m okay and so we can write omega is equal to root of k by m radian per second okay the unit for omega is it is a radian per second it is a circular natural frequency it is circular circular natural frequency okay so instead of omega i'm just putting because it's natural frequency i'm just adding omega n which is equal to root of k the f1 value okay there's a frequency okay in heads okay so for that okay so what is natural frequency f1 which is equal to so I have to divide this term by 2 pi. Okay. And now the equation becomes Fn is 1 by 2 pi. So omega n is root of k by m. It is cycle per second or otherwise we can represent that it is in heads okay so this is the frequency of longitudinal vibration so it is fn is 1 by 2 pi root of k by m okay